Oh my god, everyone is so ignorant. Oh my god. Who are the real Egyptians? Black or are they Arabs? Move on to another accomplished black woman, Cleopatra. So speaking of Nubians, they never identify themselves as blacks. Kevin Hart said that ancient Egyptians were African. Egyptians look so different than those in Sudan and Sudan. Ah, uh, so much to cover in so little time. It's the new hot debate. Who were the ancient Egyptians? Are Egyptians African or Arab? Does Egypt have a race problem? All this and more coming straight to you. I changed it to my Galabia, and I want to say this video is for everyone. Whether you are an Afrocentric who believes that the ancient Egyptians were black, or if you are an Egyptian who is very mad about that even being brought up, or if you have no idea what any of this is about, what should you believe, what were the ancient Egyptians, I'm going to cover all of that, I promise you. If you're wondering right now, who is this white man in front of me? Hi, my name is Meta. I'm known on TikTok for talking about Egypt and race and all this type of stuff. And I am half white American, half Coptic society Egyptian. And that'll make sense later. To start things out, this discussion of the ancient Egyptians race is not new. It's been happening for the last few hundred years. I have a video explaining the details of this, but essentially Europeans wanted to claim Egypt as white for racism. But even in the 1800s, you have people arguing that the ancient Egyptians were black because the Coptic people, my people, look mulatto. Based on our thick lips and our, and our jaundiced skin, we must be a mixture of black, so then therefore the ancient Egyptians must be black. And that's still believed by a lot of people today. And honestly, I don't blame them. Look at Colin Kaepernick. He's literally half white, half black, and he looks super Egyptian, super Coptic. That looks like a Krolos or a Mina or a Ebonob to me. But the guy who really started this whole debate is named Chick Anta Diop, a legendary Senegalese man that dedicated his life to fighting racism through showing that Africa was the center of the entire world. All civilization comes from Africa, really. And that's what we call Afrocentrism. And here's the thing. Historically, he's actually kind of right. For one, all humans, regardless of where you're from, are originally from Africa. And where does a lot of European culture come from? Greek. Where does a lot of Greek culture come from? Egypt. Where is Egypt? Africa. So therefore, Africa is actually the center of a lot of civilization. This brings me to my first major point, and I'm mainly addressing Egyptians with this. Egypt is African. Boo! 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 I'm so tired of hearing Egyptians say, we're not African, we're Egyptian. Bitch, where the fuck do you think Egypt is? The other thing about this that pisses me off and so many of my friends is that this assumes that Africa is like this one thing, like, oh, there's Egypt and North Africa, which is, you know, Arab, but then there's Sub-Sahara Africa, and they're all the same, basically, which is so not true. Look at the Nubians compared to the Dinka. Look at the Dinka compared to the Somalis. Some Egyptians like to separate themselves from the rest of Africa, but you guys, we are part of this whole color gradient. If you go to North Egypt, yes, many people are very light, but as you go to Luxor, Ginna, Sohag, Aswan, you know that it gradually gets to the point where it can get hard to tell the difference between a South Egyptian and a North Sudanese person, or even between an Eritrean or an Ethiopian. As an Egyptian, I know it can be hard to say this, but we are African. We are very much African. We are integrated into the history, the culture. We are just as African as anyone else. Back to Diop. When I say that this man is a legend and brilliant, I'm not exaggerating. He was so ahead of his time and so important for so many people. But he was definitely not perfect and made a lot of very, very major mistakes that are still being perpetuated today. So it's time to address Afrocentric arguments. Warning, we will be getting into the weeds of a lot of this stuff. Many people don't know this, but there's not an Afrocentric argument. There are many different points of views, and I want to address as many as I possibly can. Here's what we will be addressing during this section. There are timestamps below. Feel free to skip to the question you want to hear. Let's get into it. The current Egyptians are Arab invaders, not the original Egyptians. This is probably one of the most common arguments, and it also makes the most sense. Much of the people of the Mena region are Muslim, speak Arabic, and look pretty similar to outsiders, so it makes sense that it was probably an Arab demographic that wiped out the indigenous population of Africa and replaced them, or, or whatever. But, not what happened, and here's some reasons why. For one, the Arabs came in 641 AD, and do you know the population of the Arabs that first came? Four to six thousand. The population of Egypt during that time was 6 to 10 million. Hi, editing Meta here. Uh, tons and tons of more Arabs would come to Egypt throughout time. But the thing that you're going to see as a trend with this is that 
No population can really compete with how numerous the Egyptians were and are. Now hold on, I can hear your counter argument. Meta, look at the 16th century England, a small country that took over all of America and wiped out much of the population of the Native Americans. A very good counter argument. So let's talk about the indigenous people of Egypt. Believe it or not, but that was ancient Egyptian. But it's now called Coptic and it is spoken in the churches of Egypt. To make a very, very long story short, before Egypt was Muslim, Egypt was a Christian nation. But when the Arabs or Muslims or however you want to say it came in 641 AD, the conversion to Islam began in Egypt. But there was a demographic that did not convert and they became what we now know the Coptic people of Egypt. This demographic is what we call an ethno-religion. Essentially, it's a religion of people who stay so within themselves and do not mix with other people for so long that they become their own ethnicity. And so the Coptic people of Egypt are actually a great freeze frame of what Egyptians looked like before the Arab conquest. And they look the same as Muslim Egyptians. I didn't explain how severe this is. Uh, this isn't just, oh, Coptic and Muslims, that's really taboo if they marry. This is like, um, yeah, that's not happening. Like in most of Egypt's history and a lot of Egypt today in rural areas, if that happens, it's like, oh, you're a 1960s black man in Alabama and you want to marry a white woman. Oh, that's, I wouldn't recommend that. That's not a good idea. This is also a great example of why it can be so offensive to some people when a random demographic from, let's say, America says, we're the real Egyptians because the Coptic people have been discriminated against pretty seriously for being real Egyptians. There's a chance I might get in trouble for just saying this on YouTube. There'll probably be some hateful comments, but a lot of our elders, our parents, our grandparents have really, really messed up dark stories of being discriminated against, being attacked, being beaten up just because they have this symbol on them or because their family is Coptic. This isn't just a Coptic issue though. Muslims have to deal with anti-Egyptian sentiment within themselves as well, because when you have very, very curly hair that's natural in Egypt, that's not a good thing. Or when you have darker skin or any of the natural occurring things that make Egyptians naturally Egyptian, they look down upon it. They wanna look more Arab or white, they're conquerors. But let's move on to the next argument. The current Egyptians are a mix of all the people that have colonized Egypt. Yep, and I have no interest in debating anyone who says differently. What civilization do you know that can exist for well over 5,000 years between the biggest crossroads of all of humanity of Africa and the Middle East and Europe and not be mixed? But, wait for it. What's your point? If your point is, well, the current Egyptians are mixed, so that means that the old demographic must have been black or darker. Okay, here's the counterpoint. Based on DNA tests, which I do hate using, the current population of Egypt actually has substantially more Central African DNA in them than they originally did because of the slave trade. Meaning some people argue, and I've heard actually well-respected people argue this, that the ancient Egyptians could have been a bit lighter than the current population. Here's what I think as a mixed Egyptian man. <laughs> Let's stop playing blood quantum, okay? The problem with both sides equally is that there is evidence easily that the ancient Egyptians, like today, looked very diverse. A dark Egyptian from Ginna is no less Egyptian than a white Egyptian from Cairo. I don't care if whoever's mom was from Turkey or whatever. If you're Egyptian, to me, you're Egyptian. You speak Mosri, you're Egyptian. That's it. Khalas. Oh, my Arabic speakers, you like that khalas? Was that, was that good? Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't already clear, I'm actually talking to everyone right now. I'm not talking to just Americans or, or Europeans or... I'm talking to Egyptians too. <laughs> All you racist little 14 year old boys in my fucking comment section saying, oh, this person is less Egyptian because he's dark. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Ignore my hair, but Egypt has always been in the crossroads between the Middle East, Europe and Africa. It has never not been there. So what makes you think that there would ever be a time where Egypt looked like one thing? And for those of you who are not Egyptian who don't understand this concept, in Egypt, I know people that are fully 0% Egyptian. Their family is from Armenia or Turkey or somewhere else around the region, but they are more Egyptian 
than I could ever be even though I'm Coptic. And in Egypt, they are seen as Egyptian. The idea of DNA purity in Egypt is a very foreign idea to many Egyptians. It's more of, do you generally look Egyptian and do you speak Masri? Cool, you're Egyptian to us. But yes, for those of you wondering, when you are much darker, let's say from South Sudan, you're not gonna be able to fit in even if you speak fluent Egyptian Arabic. It's sad. The Greek historian Herodotus wrote, that the Egyptians were black skin with woolly hair, like the Ethiopians. Yep, he for sure said that. And Welcome to the game show, Guess That Ethnicity. What the fuck? Where you just guess that ethnicity. Okay. Here's how the game works. We're gonna show you images of East African men and you're gonna have to guess where they're from. Are they from Sudan? Are they from Egypt? What about Eritrea? Are you ready? Yeah. Let's play. Okay. Where was this man from? Ethiopian for 500. Ooh, I am sorry. This is the Egyptian president, Anwar Sadat. What about this man? Sudanese for 800. Easy. Wow, you are Dude. ignorant. This is the Egyptian rapper, Wegs. Okay, here's an easy one to save the day. Where is this man from? Eritrean, easy. That is Eritrean dude. Wow, that's literally your fucking uncle. You are some racist piece of sh You get my point. Herodotus said that about Egyptians, that they were black with curly hair, because that's what they are. Egypt is not just Cairo and Alexandria. There's a whole lot of other people in Egypt, like people from side who are lower and have darker skin, curly hair. Mm -hmm. But the historically annoying thing about people who quote Herodotus and say, oh, he saw the ancient Egyptians said they were black. Guys, he saw them in the fifth century BC, meaning Egypt had already been conquered five times by the Hyksos, by the Assyrians, by the Nubians, by the Libyans, and by the Persians. And he still identified them as black. I'm just saying it doesn't make any sense. Like some of you will say, oh, the Hyksos erased the original Egyptians, and then say, see, Herodotus saw the original Egyptians. Herodotus came a thousand years after the Hyksos had already came and gone. You can't quote both. You can't say, Thomas Jefferson was the first black president. One, that's factually incorrect, and two, totally wrong timelines. Oh my gosh. The Nubian people are the true Egyptians. Ah, this one is 10 out of 10 cringe. Nubian people are their own ethnicity, similar to the Beja people, similar to the Siwa people, similar to the Bedouin people. There's a lot of different ethnicities in Egypt, and they're all Egyptian nationally, but they're all different ethnicities. They have different cultures, histories, and they deserve to be seen in that way. Now to speak to the Egyptian politics of it, I'm very tired of Egyptians thinking that Nubians or other demographics are less Egyptian. They are indigenous to Egypt. This, Egypt is their land just like it is our land. Do not, ugh. But we are different ethnicities. And if you wanna read more about how they're different, look into the languages of each. Um, for example, one of the Nubian languages, Kenzi, is Nilo-Saharan. It is not related to ancient Egyptian in the slightest bit. Or for example, Beja. Beja is Afro-Asiatic, but it's quite a unique language. Go down that ah! <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. So I'm into jump scares now. <laughs> The nose of the Sphinx and many other Egyptian monuments were blown off to hide their African features. I actually used to believe this one too. Uh, the story goes that when Napoleon came with the French in 1798, they saw the Sphinx with his distinctly African features and African nose and blew it off to hide the fact that ancient Egypt was black. This one is not true and it's very easy to show how. Look at this image. This was drawn by the Danish explorer uh, Friedrich Louis Norden in 1738. 31 years before Napoleon was even born. The fact of the matter is a lot of noses are missing because of erosion and because when a statue falls over, it breaks their nose first because it falls on their face. Now, some of you might say, that's bullshit, da 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 da. So that leads us to our next question. Look at this sculpture of the true Egyptians. I've seen this for years since I was a kid. People on YouTube or TikTok will say, see, look at the ancient Egyptians, these are the real ones. And they'll bring up uh, my Hepri, they'll bring Queen Tiye, they'll bring up Narmer, they'll show up all these images and see, see, these are the images of the real Egyptians. Okay. A lot of non-Egyptian people don't quite understand how many artifacts there are from ancient Egypt that we find. Like, I tried to make a list for you guys of the last 10 years discoveries we made. There was so many, I couldn't actually put all of them down. 
There are thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures of ancient Egyptians, of texts describing ancient Egypt that Egyptologists can read and understand. I say all this because a lot of this, oh, they're trying to erase the original Egyptian history. That's not possible. You can't paint over all of the artifacts that we have or erase the noses of all of them. There are, oh my God, so many artifacts that have fully intact features, all that, and they look pretty much exactly like my aunt or my cousin or my dad or my uncle or my, my, my best friend or my, like so many. But to switch sides real quick, watch this TikTok. This is what the ancient Egyptians would actually look like. Dark skinned olive tone, like myself. You can clearly tell from all their depictions. This accurately depicts me. Studies found that they're closely related to the Middle Eastern regions such as Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, etc. Leave my pharaohs and my people out of your mouth. Okay, he is just as wrong. In fact, from my experience, most of the depictions of the ancient Egyptians were not as light as him at all. Most of them were very much similar to Saides, like people from Luxor, Gena, Aswan, Sohag, and, and people from Ethiopia, Eritrea, Sudan. Like, stop with this whole, the ancient Egyptians were super, super light. Basically, they were Lebanese and like, what? No. Somewhere, we have proof of that, but not all of them. Damn, not even maybe the majority of them, okay? Shit. And for cultural context, if you're not Egyptian, that's part of the Egyptian narrative, sadly. A lot of the television or a lot of the media or whenever you see Egyptians, you usually see very light-skinned Egyptians and the rest of Egypt that is not light at all gets completely ignored and that's a problem in itself. But for educational sake, if you wanna learn about the people I mentioned, let's talk about it. Narmer was the guy who unified ancient Egypt, um, very famous. I think we only have two things of him. I think we have the Narmer palette and we have this pretty messed up uh, monument of him or face. My Hepri is a really cool story, but everyone pretty much agrees that he was probably Nubian or half Nubian, and he went out of his way to be displayed as different as the rest of the Egyptians because he went out of his way to change his wig to match his real hair and paint himself in the colors of the Nubians. So he was Egyptian and Egyptians loved him, but he was also Nubian Egyptian, meaning he knew that there was a difference and everyone else knew that there was a difference. And finally, Queen Tia is actually from my family's village or right next to my family's village. And she looks almost identical to one of my aunts. Like I, I can't show you an image of her because of cultural reasons, but like super, super close. Um, so reminder, not all Egyptians look like they're from Cairo. <laughs> the ancient Egyptians were black until the Greeks came. It's 4 a.m., I'm, I'm losing my steam a bit, but this is a very well-documented thing. Based on census reports from that time, tax information, also just uh, counting infantry, cavalry, all that kind of stuff, we have all that data from the Ptolemaic period in Egypt. And let me tell you, people do math to calculate this stuff. In this article called Counting the Greeks in Egypt, Immigration in the First Century of the Ptolemaic Rule, um, this person goes in and calculates the estimated population of Greeks in Egypt, and let's go to it. Hold on, do you see the math this woman is doing? Like, uh, here's an excerpt. In order to approximate better the Greek proportion of Egyptian population, blah, 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 I suggest using a mathematical model of diffusion, which describes the distribution of Greeks in Egypt as an exponential function along the north-south axis diffusion function. What the fuck? I don't know how I did it, but I did read the entire article, and the summary is some people claim that it's ten, up to 10%, but that is an insanely high report, and based on her math, the number is probably around 4 to 5%, max. So in short, yes, thousands and thousands of Greeks came to Egypt, but the population of Egypt was 4 million, and at that time, they just couldn't make a dent in the population to really change the demographics. Also, Greeks were not evenly distributed throughout Egypt. For example, they were concentrated in places like Alexandria, El Fayyum, other locations, but the rest of Egypt, Greeks didn't usually go or have a high population because that's just not where they went. But damn, this woman is a fucking nerd. That shit was hard to read. Oh! The old kingdom of Egypt was black, but later kingdoms were not. Uh, this is a very niche claim, and at this point, it's like, 
what are we doing? If you want, I can spend time showing you these artifacts from the Old Kingdom that are very much uh, consistent with how Egyptians look today. And yes, of course, some of you might say, well, see, they were painted over. Oh, see, they changed them. Or, oh, these are faked or whatever. But it's like, okay, what? at what point do you uh, agree with artifacts and not agree with them? Like, it's like, it sounds like at this point, there's no interest in actually the discussion, but more of, I have to prove my point. Like I've said before, yes, a lot of these monuments of the Old Kingdom and the New Kingdom and current today Egypt are very much looking black, but it, they're pretty much Egyptian. They look like Egyptians. They don't look like they're Wolof or they don't look like they're Khoisan. They look Egyptian. Egyptians are Arab. Yes, they are, but a lot of people who are not Arab don't understand this. Um, Arab means two things. You can be genetically Arab and you can be culturally Arab. You can be both or you can be one or not the other. For example, this person and this person are both Arab, but do they look like they have the same genetics? No. Usually when we say someone is genetically Arab, we mean they are originally from the peoples of Yemen, okay? Or around Yemen. But this, don't quote me on. There's like a lot of debate on this and I'm just not well researched on this whole like, who's the original Arabs? It's the Arabian Peninsula, somewhere in there. Usually. But when someone is culturally Arab, let's say someone from Sudan or Egypt, they're not genetically Arab, but they are culturally Arab, meaning they speak Arabic. They're probably Muslim, but not all. Um, they usually have a certain amount of cultural influences from Arab culture. The idea of being Arab can be very confusing, but just because someone says that they are Arab does not mean that they are not native to their area. Many people from Morocco or, uh, or wherever will say, I am Arab, but I'm also Moroccan. I'm from here. I'm indigenous to here. It's similar, but not the exact same as the word Latino. The ancient Egyptians had technology we can't even fathom. This follows a lot of claims like, ooh, the ancient Egyptians had uh, answers to the world that we don't have today, like ancient technologies and all that that we don't understand. Stop fetishizing Egypt, okay? It's a really weird thing that everyone's on the same boat of, oh my God, the Europeans who did all the colonization and conquering, they're disgusting. How could they do that? How do you think nations get a lot of wealth? It's not through being good people. The ancient Egyptians were definitely ahead of their time in a lot of ways, but stop with this whole, oh, they were so great and da, da, da. They did a lot of terrible things. Where do you think they got a lot of the gold, a lot of this gemstones that they got? It wasn't through just fair trade. It was through, I want that, give it to me. If you don't believe me, read ancient texts about how they handled war and how they handled getting all their stuff. It, it, it's not a children's book. Cleopatra was black. I don't even know how we got here. I watched like two episodes of the Cleopatra docuseries and it's, it's not, it's not good. It's pretty bad. Um, it's not bad because it's offensive or anything, honestly. It's just boring. It's like a very just badly made thing. <laughs> but from the little bit I watched, it seemed like they insinuated that the Ptolemies that were the ruling class actually at that point had mixed with the Egyptian population and were this like mixed race people. No, no. If you didn't know, the Ptolemies did not respect Egyptian people. They essentially created a caste system and made the Egyptian people do all their dirty work while they profited off the natives. Now, whether Cleopatra was Egyptian, here's my two cents, and I'm by no means an expert on the Ptolemaic period at all. Yes, it does seem like there's a little bit of fogginess on, I think her, her grandmother could have been Egyptian potentially, and, and there's she could be a quarter, but here's the thing. The Ptolemies were a group of insane rulers that were into inbreeding and did not want to mix with the native population. They had no interest in the native population. They didn't even know how to speak the language. And the idea that they would have a legitimate child with an indigenous person and then make them queen is kind of crazy to me. I'm sure they are worded an insane amount of Egyptian women, but I'm positive that they would probably not make them queen. But in the case that she is a quarter or maybe half Egyptian, she probably looked like me, honestly. I think they did mix with the Seleucid dynasty. So they're, you know, maybe a little, little dash of Syrian, but. And finally, Ancient Egypt is part of black history. Damn right it is. Just think about it this way. Most black Americans or Jamaicans or Haitians or descendant of slave populations don't have a lot of Ethiopian or Sudanese or Kenyan blood in them. But what kind of energy do they get when they visit those countries? My brother, my brother, my black brother, you're part of us. You're part of this journey. We're all African black together. Thank you, welcome in, right? That's the energy, even though they don't have any descendants with them, but they're still welcomed like their family. So why is it that when those same people from America or Jamaica or Haiti go to Egypt, 
they don't get that energy. They get the energy of, mm, you're a guest here, but you're not part of us. We have, you're not from us. We're the same. Even though the Egyptians saying that will be looking just like the American they're saying that to. This, oh, no, 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 we're not the same. We're not the same. You know the energy it gives. Sorry, guys, but some of you guys be like, I know black. I know black. I know black. Impossible. I know black. I'm Dominican. I'm Puerto Rican. I know black. Be looking just like me. We're not black in the same way that South Sudan is black. We're not black in the same way that Khoisans are black. We're not black in the same way, but no one is, okay? Stop. If you're Egyptian, you're like, we're not black. None of us are black. You're just wrong. You're completely 100% wrong. So many of us are. We are part of black history, whether you like it or not. Deal with it, okay? Just because your ass is white or your ass looks like mine does not mean that the rest of the country is not part of that history of that color, okay? Fuck off, okay? But the ancient Egyptians were not black in the same way that Godfrey was. The, if Godfrey was in ancient Egyptian times, he wouldn't have been seen as Egyptian. He probably would have been seen as maybe Nubian or an other, but they wouldn't have seen him as, oh, you look like us, because he doesn't. But why do they have to? Why do people try to just homogenize Africa? Ethiopians have never, ever looked like the Khoisan, ever, okay? But that doesn't make them less African. That's like the fourth time I brought up the Khoisan. I don't, I need to pick another people, shit. <laughs> the reason why Egypt aligns more with Arab identity does not have to do with our actual DNA. It has to do with a lot of conquerings and a lot of identity politics. But there was times in Egypt's history that we looked the same, but yet we probably would have seen ourselves more similar to the rest of East Africa. So, just get educated, man. Read a book. I, there's, there's books. Damn, damn, I'm fucking tired of this bullshit. So, after all this information, what should you believe? If you got through this whole thing, I think you can probably think for yourself, but if you didn't watch the whole thing, here's what we know. The ancient Egyptians and the current Egyptians are very similar as far as what they look like. Of course, this depends on what part of Egypt and what time period you're talking about. For example, in the Fayyum during the Ptolemaic period, I think 20 to 30% of the people were Greek there. So obviously that part of Egypt during that time looked a little bit different, but this is depending on, you know, there was the Nubians, there was the, the, the Libyans. A lot of people came in and out of Egypt, but generally speaking, Egypt is a very, very big place. It is very hard to change the entire demographics. And more or less, they're about the same. By no means am I claiming that there is no admixture from anywhere else. I think what I'm really claiming is the idea of the Egyptians ever being one thing and looking one way is quite a stupid idea. The Egyptians have always been a diverse people. They always will be a diverse people. They're in the intersections of Africa, Arabia, and Europe. There's no way to not be diverse. Does Egypt have a race problem? 100%, and it's part of the process. We have to work on it. Is Egypt part of black history? Yes, depending on who you ask. For me, yes, but it depends on how you define the word black. I think there's plenty of room for current Egypt and ancient Egypt to be part of black history. But in that journey, please do not exclude current Egyptians from that. It is our history. Okay. What time is it? Uh, it's 4.30 a.m. God damn. Watch this video get like 20 views. Bye.